rare look inside Pine Valley, arguably the number one golf course in the world. George Crump never lived to see the course completed. Did he? No, he didn't. He passed away before, I believe, four holes were. This greenside bunker, front right, affectionately known as a certain part of the Devils and that. on the Champions Tour, assuming that they all eventually play there. I would be very surprised if either one of them ever. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. I'm Harry Donahue, and today we're at Pine Valley, a rare look inside Pine Valley, arguably the number one golf course in the world. We're here because it's the Philadelphia Golf Association's Philadelphia Open. So stay with us for our tour of Pine Valley as Inside Golf continues in just a moment. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts. By Club Champion, better fit, lower scores. Now open in Valley Kinwin. By Southwest Greens, the pro knows. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Defining a target, realizing a dream. Susquehanna Bank can help you get your plans off the ground. Whether you're sending kids to college or doing something special for yourself. Susquehanna's financial advisors are worth talking to. We can help you find the smartest way to borrow money and save money in the process. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts for dreamers like you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Pine Valley was founded in 1913 by a group of Philadelphia area golfers, including George Crump. The plan was to give the Philadelphia area a world-class golf course. Well, they succeeded even beyond their own expectations. Pine Valley is consistently ranked as the top golf course in the U.S. Crump was given the opportunity to design the course, which is located only a few miles east of the city, in a sandy pineland section of South Jersey because he knew the area from hunting expeditions. It was his first and only course design. In fact, Crump didn't live to see it finished. Over the years, Pine Valley has hosted some prestigious events including the Walker Cup matches between the U.S. and Great Britain and Ireland, and the annual George Crump Invitational, which is a two-day 36-hole event featuring some of the best amateur players in the world. The winner's list includes Jay Sigel and the late Billy Hyman III. And this year marked the fourth time that Pine Valley has hosted the Philadelphia Open, featuring some 70 of the best amateur and professionals in the Philadelphia area. Tell me a little bit about the history of the Philadelphia Open in Pine Valley and, and why you think, you know, the staff here uh, with Jim Davis, the president on down, decided to host this event. Well, we've had it twice in recent years, twice since I've been here, 2002, and now again this year. Uh, and Mr. Brewer is actually the one who suggested he thought the, the event would be good for the club, and it is. When it's great to show the golf course off and have the public come in and we have fun doing it. Yeah, and uh, I think there are, what, 1,500 people on the grounds today? Uh, they told us they sold, well, they kept upping it. They said 1,200 tickets, and then they got near 1,500, and then they kind of cut it off, and then we had volunteers and players each got three tickets, which weren't in that count, so. And it's a very relaxed atmosphere. I mean, the galleries are able to go out on the fairways, practically right up close to the, to the uh, competitors, and uh, Everybody seems to be behaving themselves, and the players don't seem to mind, and the fans seem to love it. Yeah, we do this, also do the same thing for the Crump. We have, and we have about 800 come in for the Crump, and, but that's match play, so we have almost all, we have seven or 800 all with one group. And it's a little more, logistically, it's a little harder to move them around here. We have, we have a marshal with each group, and they just kind of point and shoot. But it's the culture of the club to be relaxed. You just mentioned the Crump Invitational, which is named in honor of uh, the man who founded Pine Valley way back. And you're coming up, I know, on your centennial in, the, in 2013. George Crump never lived to see the course completed, did he? No, he didn't. He passed away before, I believe, four holes were actually finished. But they were all laid out and ready to go. He, uh, Mr. Wilson kind of came in and finished it. and um, I think it was done to Mr. Crump's specs. Somebody told me that uh, George Crump wanted Pine Valley to be, you know, a great golf course, but also he was concerned about maybe 
other areas of the country, uh, getting a little bit advantage over Philadelphia. He knew what Philadelphia had to offer in terms of competitive golf, and he wanted a special place like Pine Valley. Looks like his dream came true. Well, that's exactly what he wanted. His goal was he, he Mr. Crump felt that, that we didn't develop enough national caliber players in the Philadelphia area, and he wanted to produce a venue that was a place for them to play and practice and work on their game so that they could compete on a national level and bring more prominence to Philadelphia golf. Well, thanks for letting us uh, kind of come in here today and take a look at arguably the best golf course in the world. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. One of the more tenured members here at Pine Valley is Bill Walsh. Now, he and his wife have 15 children. You probably wonder, how often does this guy get out to play golf? Well, let me give you a little clue. He's been a member here for seven decades, and he's seen it all. A longtime member here at Pine Valley, Bill Walsh. Bill, how long a time have you been a member? Since 1957. 1957. So that puts you in a pretty elite category. I guess uh, you're the oldest member? No, there are a couple of fellows that have been here since maybe 1949, 1950. <clears throat> One of them I know very well, Mel Dickinson. He doesn't live around here now. I think he was 1949, but he was my proposer here in 1957. After we had just lost in the extra hole in the championship, a member guest championship, with a fellow who sunk a 35-foot putt from the back of the green. Wow. Hit the pin, jumped up, and went back down in. How or has Pine Valley changed over the course of those 57 years? Well, it didn't change at all for a long time. And then after the people began to hit the ball so far, and the clubs helped them, and the balls helped them, and a lot of other things, I guess, they decided if they wanted to stay difficult, one of the most difficult in the country, if not the world, they would have to make it a little bit longer. So Gordon Brewer was a famous golfer. He was president at the time, and he talked some other people into doing it with him. And so I think they've made it now a course that for the annual Crump Cup, named after the founder of Pine Valley, which invites amateurs from all over the country and some that play on Walker Cup teams, foreign players, and that's their big tournament. And now you don't see people shooting 66 in the qualifying round <laughs> or 67. Speaking of good rounds of golf here at Pine Valley, what's your best competitive score? Well, my best score ever is 573s. And I think my best medal play qualifying score was one time I had a 78. What's your favorite hole or holes here at Pine Valley? I think the par th uh, three hole, thir uh, 14th hole, is probably the prettiest hole and the hole that I think makes visitors here think, boy, what a beautiful hole, because you're up so high and you have to go over water well, behind the green and in front of it and at the left side. So that's probably uh, my favorite hole or I'd say overall. Speaking of classics, you are a classic because you have on, I don't know how many occasions, oh, I do know how many occasions, I think it's over 360, been able to shoot your age or better. And that goes through, mm -hmm. what, your 60s, 70s, 80s, and now your 90s, huh? You're a young it's guy. It's actually 377. And counting. And counting, yeah. <laughs> but I haven't been too good since I came home from Florida. The courses here have too much grass this year. <laughs> Bill, it's a pleasure meeting you and uh, kind of going down memory lane a little bit here at Pine Valley and over the course of your brilliant career as a golfer. Thank you very much. What, uh, what do you think about Pine Valley when you come out here and, and see it even six or seven times? Uh, how difficult it is from these regular men's tees. My, just the carry alone off the tee is pretty, pretty difficult. So other than that, in the greens, once you get to the greens, I'm a pretty good putter, but I don't think I do all the well here. Would you say it lives up to all the uh, hoopla as the greatest golf course in the world? I've been to a lot of so-called greatest golf courses in the world, and uh, this is certainly right up there with them. Do you have a favorite hole? Uh, I think 18, pretty difficult, nice, nice finishing hole, tough hole.
I don't know if my favorite to play, but it may be the favorite spectator-wise. Just to look at and say, boy, I wonder if I could play this hole. Yeah, that and the, uh, the long par five, I guess number 14, I think it is. Great. Would Pine Valley be on your bucket list? Yeah, when do we play? You got, you got an in here, Harry? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'll work on it. At this moment, across the country, Families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. carry is extraordinary. I mean, I, I can't even conceive of hitting one ball that far, but um, absolutely beautiful, well-maintained. Um, it's great to see guys out there playing. Lives up to its reputation? Oh, I think undoubtedly. Well, you played here before. Yeah, I played in the late 90s, and uh, it was a real treat to be on this golf course and play it. Uh, the force carries are just unbelievable. I think it's more of a mental thing, just being able to knock it over. Did a lot of it come back to you uh, when you were walking yeah, I around? I tried to remember where I was <laughs> in relationship to where these great players were, and it was n nowhere near where, where they were. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a great, great treat to see them. So you have uh, a real rooting interest here today, not just in looking at the golf course, but your son is here today. Absolutely, yes. Uh, my son Alexander is very excited. It's first time here playing, and uh, he was really looking forward to uh, being able to play on this gorgeous golf course. I assume it's your first trip to Pine Valley too. Yes it is. Yeah. Your impression? Oh, it, it absolutely is the prettiest course I've seen. Uh, the maintenance of the course is just outstanding. So it was it was a little tiring to walk 36 holes but boy it was a real pleasure. Do you think uh, he'll be back? Oh I hope so. He'll certainly uh, he'll certainly want to come back. Uh, it was a great opportunity. Alexander, I just talked to your mother. She was pretty excited about being here at Pine Valley. I guess you yeah. were too. Yeah, it was a great experience. Uh, first time here. Um, struggled a little bit in the first round. Better in the second round. Shot uh, 77. But it was tough. The greens were tough. Uh, struggled to get the speeds down. But uh, I don't know. It's a great great experience and awesome course. Was it tough getting your emotions under control? I mean, were you a little excited like last night getting ready to tee off and play today? Yeah, um, I mean, it wasn't that bad. I've played a lot of tournaments, a lot of, I don't know, plays at some pretty well-known clubs, but never played here. I know this is always ranked up there, normally number one, which is crazy. It's right here in New Jersey. So, uh, but yeah, I was excited to play, and uh, I don't know. I was just glad I got, got in to qualify to play it. So I think my emotions were under control. Well, now you'll do better next time when you come back to Pine Valley. Yeah, I don't know when they'll have it back here, but uh, it'll probably be a couple years. But uh, yeah, I'd love to come back. I know it's tough to get on, so that's why I was excited to get here in the first place. This is the fourth hole at Pine Valley, and there's quite a legend involving the great Jay Wood Platt years ago. He started off with a birdie on number one. He then had an eagle on the second hole, a hole in one on the par three third, and here on number four, another birdie. He was six under par through four holes, decided he couldn't play any better than that, and went to the adjacent clubhouse and celebrated at the grill. The 10th hole here at Pine Valley is a par three, plays 160 yards to the middle of the green. Now during the tournament, the pin was in the back, so it was not quite as benign as it may be normally. And of course, the characteristic here at number 10 is this greenside bunker, front right, affectionately known as a certain part of the devil's anatomy. Another unique characteristic of Pine Valley is in the bunkers. Take a look at this bunker adjacent to the fourth green. You don't see a rake. In fact, there's not one rake on the entire course here at Pine Valley. What players have to do after they hit a sand shot is just smooth it out with their foot. The 18th green here at Pine Valley is one of the largest on the golf course. And as large as the green itself is, that's how subtle some of the breaks can be. 
Here's a look at the fifth hole at Pine Valley. It's an uphill par three, playing about 240 yards. They say only God can make a par on this hole. As this crew prepares to tee off, we're going to take a break. And we'll have our teed off panel next on Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. Uh, uh, 50 million in endorsement. <laughs> Tiger, I don't think he'll ever hit a ball on the Champions Tour either. I think, I don't know quite what he'll be. If five friends are having a light beer and they all put their drinks down in the same place, how long will it take to find the Yingling Light Lager? About that long. Because the rich amber color of Yingling Light Lager makes it stand out from the rest. The true lager flavor, however, makes it disappear. 99 calories, 100% authentic lager. Yingling Light Lager, from America's oldest brewery. Rethink your light beer. Guests of Inside Golf enjoy dining at Sin Sin, the popular Asian fusion restaurant located on Germantown Avenue in the heart of scenic Chestnut Hill. And now it's time for Teed Off, brought to you by Yingling, America's oldest brewery. Be forced to play with each other as much as they can. Welcome back. Inside Golf continues with Teed Off. And today we're back at the Tilted Kilt, Route 202 in King of Prussia, adjacent to the King of Prussia Mall. Great lunches, great happy hours, great dinners, plenty of TVs, and you know what they say about the Tilted Kilt. Beer never looked so good. Our panel never looked so good. Joe Logan from MyPhillyGolf.com is back with us. And Tony Leodora, the host of Golf Talk Live, Saturday morning, 7 o'clock on 990 WNTP. All right, Joe, I'm going to put it to you. We hear so much, and it always is hyped up, the rivalry between Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson. Recently, of course, they played together. The USGA tried to do everything they could to stow that rivalry a little bit. Phil looked like he wasn't going to make the cut practically. <laughs> Tiger looked like he was going to win the tournament. Left Phil in his wake and then everybody left Tiger. Is it time to put this Phil Tiger rivalry to bed and maybe resuscitate it on the Champions Tour assuming that they all eventually play there? I would be very surprised if either one of them ever sticks a peg in the ground on the, ch on the Champions Tour. I expect Phil Mickelson to have a career, a post PGA Tour career, on the order of what Greg Norman has now. He's a smart guy, he's a businessman. I can see Phil Mickelson wines and golf course designs and lines of clothing and a lot of charitable stuff. I don't think he'll play, ch you know, the guy's making $50 million a year. Why does he need to be out on the Champions Tour? Uh, uh, 50 million in endorsement. <laughs> Tiger, I don't think he'll ever hit a ball on the Champions Tour either. I think I don't know quite what he'll be doing, but I don't think it'll be playing. The well, he's so. still got another 15 years to worry about it, and he thinks in his mind at least five more majors. What do you think? Well, one thing, I don't know whether they're going to put a peg in the ground in the Champions Tour. But I guarantee you, both of them wish that they never put a peg in the ground together again. That was really warm and fuzzy for those first two days. Those two guys didn't even look at each other. And, uh, you know, I, I, I know there's no love lost there, so playing together is not a lot of fun. You know, we, we're getting to an age right now where the guys who are really making huge money on the PGA Tour, a number of them may not look at going the Champions Tour anymore. The ones who all went to it before weren't making that kind of money. Now we're getting to the era where some of these guys, you know, I don't know who the... Um, Next one, you know, we, we saw Couples and, and Greg Norman go to the Champions Tour. They both made a lot of money, but it's a whole different ball of wax right now. Sure. Yeah, there's too much money to be made elsewhere. You know, you talked about the, the steely conditions, uh, cold stairs and everything between Tiger and Phil when they're matched together. But I think, I know television loves that. They oh. want that. They want to see two guys that appear not to like each other, be forced to play with each other as much as they can, don't you think? And this surprises you? Well, no, it doesn't. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and like, like, like Tony, you almost said, let's not have it anymore. But that's what the powers that be, and it's television, 
working in conjunction with the with the tour or the USGA or whoever. Uh, they want they do that every week if they as, could. as we yeah, used to say in the newspaper business, conflict is the backbone of a news story. And these two going at each other, people love it. Yeah. I mean if it leads, it leads. Obviously this time it hurt Phil and I think it pushed Tiger a little bit for the first two days. And then after that, I don't know, maybe it might have been part of the reason he didn't have Phil there to keep him fired up the uh, last What's two different, days. different, if there is a difference, from when Jack and Arnie and, and Player and Arnie and, and Player and uh, Jack were playing? I mean, do you think back at, they didn't seem to be as, shall we say, forced to put up with each other as much as these two guys are? Or, or did they do a good job of hiding it? The, the huge difference between then and now is Aside from Phil and Tiger, the rest of these guys are pretty much chummy chummy and they get together with each other. Back in that era, there may have, they may have had their friends there, but there was some gritty competition going on between, you know, already to start with between the Caspers and Trevinos and players and Palmers, Nicholas's and those guys. So uh, they came ready to do battle they weren't patting each other on the back going down the fairways as it was. Maybe after it was a bit, they didn't have the hate for each other that Phil and Tiger probably have, but uh, I, I think there was a, a little more grim determination to start with. All right, we're going to go out to the bar now, and Ellen has somebody who has a question for Tony. Thanks very much, Harry. We're joined now by Katie. She works here at the Tilted Kilt. Katie, what is your question for Tony? Tony, what is your favorite non-golf rivalry? Well, moving from golf where we talk about the Tiger-Phil rivalry, which is minute compared to all these others, favorite non-golf rivalries, number one, Ali Frazier. Number two would probably be Chamberlain and Russell. He's a retro guy, there's Tony. That's right. Maybe we'll throw a tennis one in there, Connors and McEnroe. Uh, and... I'll throw one other one, great one in there, Affirmed and Aladar. What three Triple Crown races they had. That's our man Tony taking us down memory lane, Joe. And that's going to do it for Teed Off Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. It continues in just a moment. Hi, my name's Nicole. Come visit us at the Tilted Kilt in King of Prussia, where we have over 24 beers on draft and where a cold beer never looks so good. The Tilted Kilt Pub and Eatery. Great food, cold beer, and lots of varieties. A Celtic pub with amazing atmosphere, fantastic sports entertainment, and most of all, beautiful cast members. Come see us. Early mornings, late nights, and way too many takeout dinners. Running a business takes energy, determination, and sacrifice. And whether you're a startup, well-established, or somewhere in between, the people of Susquehanna Bank have the knowledge to help you succeed. From cash management solutions to the benefits of local loan decisions, we help keep your business moving ahead. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts for businesses like yours. Member FDIC. It's time light beer got some character. 99 calories, 100% lager. Yingling Light Lager. Rethink your light beer. Hi, my name is Jim Yenser. I am from Club Champion, a new premium club fitting service in Balakinwood, just off City Avenue on one presidential boulevard. We know that stock shafts are advertised as fitting the majority of golfers. They're getting lighter and longer every year, yet we know that one shaft doesn't fit every golfer, just like one shoe size doesn't fit every person. So let's hear more about the variables that will make a golfer play better from one of our experts at Club Champion. At Club Champion, we count amongst our customers PGA Championship winners, senior PGA Championship winners, collegiate and top amateurs across the nation. But we also service a lot of high handicap customers that can see and notice tremendous benefit from working with our fitting services. 
We have four major areas that we focus in that we differentiate from others. Number one is our technology. We use an unbiased, data-driven formula for our fittings. And TrackMan gives you 21 different data points about your club fitting, your characteristics such as launch angle, ball speed, spin rate, and we try and optimize what club the player has uh, to make those statistics and, and characteristics the best. In our putting, we use Science in Motion Putt Lab, which has 28 different components that it reads about your putting stroke and putter setup. Number two are our fitters and their experience. Our fitters are very experienced. Their knowledge of clubs across all vendors is extensive and their ability to work with individuals through their years of experience and working with customers at all levels is really what differentiates us from our competition. Number three is our demo matrix. At Club Champion, our demo matrix is really the heart of our fitting process. We have literally tens of thousands of combinations of shafts and heads that we can put together from all the major manufacturers. We use premium equipment that allows us to service the entire gamut of the golf industry from the top level players to the beginners. Lastly, the building process is really key in that it has to support everything that came out of the fitting. We have extensive building capabilities and builders that take precision in every step of the building process. Things such as weights, exact lengths, the assembly process itself by hand curing the epoxy uh, is all critical to get exactly the right equipment that was specified in the fitting. Our main goal at Club Champion is to lower people's scores. We believe that people get enjoyment out of the golf game when their scores get better and they see improvement. That's what we're focused on. For more golf course tours, swing tips, and deals on greens fees, check out the new teeitupphilly.com. There's still time to sign up for a special event. It's the Inside Golf Celebrity Scramble on Tuesday, July 31st at the Edgemont Country Club. Join local celebrities for an exciting day of golf at an amazing course. It's just $55 for non-members. To sign up, call the Edgemont Pro Shop at 610-353-1800. That's 610-353-1800. We hope to see you there. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. And I hope you enjoyed a rare look at Pine Valley, the number one golf course in the world. And our thanks to all the folks at the Philadelphia Golf Association. And congratulations to all the competitors in the 108th edition of the Philadelphia Open. Next week, Inside Golf goes to Edgemont Country Club and our celebrity Pro -Am. I'm Harry Donahue, and remember, no matter how bad it's going for you, don't pick up. See you next time from Edgemont on Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts. By Club Champion, better fit, lower scores. Now open in Balakin with. By Southwest Greens, the pro knows. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf.